Hello everybody, I am developer relations engineer David Jones Gilardi, and today I have something super fun I want to share with all of you. Now, to give a little bit of backstory, um, I was at GitHub Universe last year, and there were really two displays that really caught my attention. One in particular was this like cool enclosure that you put in your GitHub handle, and then it went through the history, your repos, and what you've done over the years. And I just thought that was super cool. The other one were these postcards. Hopefully you can see this okay. And what it did was these postcards were generated based off of your repo activity again over the years. Both these brought like a personal touch. I just thought it was such a neat way to bring in the things that we've done. So I thought this could form the basis of a really cool agentic use case to build an app that would generate unique, visually stunning code beasts to generate the underlying prompts that are needed for the image services like Dali and Stability. So let's go ahead and take a look at what these code beasts look like. So here you should be seeing um, the interface. Uh, so just to give a little background of the app itself, this is built on Python with Flask, and I used Lovable lovable.dev uh, to generate the front end portions of the app. And for somebody like myself, um, who is more of a back end person, yes, I've coded in front end plenty, but I'm a bit out of date. And I used lovable.dev to, uh, to help me generate the front end. Um, so why don't we run through the app real quick and see what it does, right? Um, so I think you probably, you see my gallery over here in the middle, you probably get an idea already, but here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put in my GitHub handle. I'm going to choose um, an AI vision model that I want to use or a service, either Stability or Dolly. In this case, I'm going to use Stability to start with. And you can see these little toasts down at the bottom. So what it's doing is actually going to go to my GitHub repo or my GitHub profile, I should say. It's going to scan through all of my repositories and it's looking for the various languages that I've used. Now, one thing I did do to make things a bit more efficient because some people have like hundreds of repositories. Um, that is a lot to scan through with the GitHub API. Um, so I do limit it a little bit and say, hey, just give me the, the top four languages. But it's gonna go through right now, it's going through my GitHub profile. You can see it actually just collected information. You see these languages. You can see here where it's got the repos. Um, and boom, it generated this Chimera code beast based off of my coding languages. Right, And then did that with the Stability API and then sent that image back. Um, so I can click on this, I can go to my repo, right? You can see I've got, now it says public repos, I can't access the private ones. Uh, so I have 30 public repositories and you can see like Python, HTML, Python, stuff like that, even some Java, get some information. What I'm actually using is O'Reilly animal references as the base. And so as it's finding various languages, you'll see it associate a Python with a snake, um, TypeScript with the Blue Jay, Rhino from JavaScript, so on and so forth. And then all those are put together in my code beast. Um, you can download it. You can also share it. So this little share button will let you share it up on Twitter. Um, and then this gallery here is a gallery of other beasts that have been generated. So something kind of fun, right? That again, brings together all of the, you know, like your coding history, if you will, into this single beast. So what's actually happening to make all this work, right? That is kind of the key thing. So I mentioned that this is actually being built within a Gentic flow under the hood. Why don't we take a look at um, that? So if you're not familiar with Langflow, Langflow is a visual IDE that you can use to build out Gen AI and Agentic workflows in a drag and drop, low code, no code way, right? Um, this flow is admittedly uh, a bit more intermediate. I'm gonna break down all the parts here in a moment. Um, but if you're just starting out, right, uh, you can go to uh, langflow.org, go to the GitHub repo, and there's instructions in there, just pip install Langflow, right? You'll see that, uh, there we go, or UV pip install Langflow, pip install Langflow uh, to install it locally. Um, you can also go to langflow.new. So langflow.new allows you to come in here and just kind of play. You don't need to sign up for anything. You can just get in here and start banging around um, and you can experiment with a simple agentic flow. Let's go ahead and we're at the 20,000 foot view of this flow. And this is the flow that is powering code beasts, right? So why don't we take a look at what's actually going on? Notice that I have these color stickies, right? You'll see I tend to color code things. Um, it actually helps me visually uh, and such like that. The green are my input and my output. So when you'll, you'll see this one here is labeled GitHub handle. 
So when you come in and I typed in my GitHub handle and said generate, that's actually sending it here through the input. And then I get an output, right? That's this other one, this output here. These are my chat outputs. Um, this is the completed payload that I have that I'm using to get all the information, the prompt and everything that I'm sending off to either Stability or DALI to then generate my code beast. Now, in, in between there, you'll see that I have some other colors. I've got these kind of beige ones. These are my data storage and retrieval. Um, so um, every time uh, you set a GitHub handle, I have to do this kind of expensive operation. Like if we take a look at the one that I did here, my Sonic DMG, you can see there's all this information that I'm getting from GitHub that I'm using then to pare down to pull out just my languages and such like that, right? There's not an API that says, just give me all the languages. I have to actually do some filtering and everything. It's a bit expensive. It's not something I want to do every single time. So I'm using the storage components here on the input and output to say, once I've gone through that kind of iteration, I store that information. Then on a secondary run, I can actually use that to pull out information about that user. So in my case, I'm using AstroDB. Uh, so I've got this GitHub user details collection that I've created. If we take a look at my flow, you'll see that my chat memory here is using the GitHub user details collection. Um, and what it's doing, it's actually using a little trick in Langflow. Um, but you can see that I have this session ID of Sonic DMG. And within it is the data. This is my this is my payload. This is actually the blob that I send out to the application, right? So I'm able to use a little trick in Langflow to to do this. I'll explain what that is later, but for now, just understand that as any particular GitHub handle is being uh, issued into the app itself, that's being stored in the database, and then I can retrieve that later. Now, you'll see this next section here, this kind of like pink section. Uh, it's using this conditional if. So Langflow has this component here, this if else component. Um, I believe this is in logic. There it is. I would just drag and drop it out, right, and hook it up. And this is a really powerful component. Because what it allows me to do is it allows me to deviate to multiple paths depending on some input information. In this particular case, what I'm doing is I'm looking at the storage and I'm saying, hey, did I return data from the database? Did this user exist in my database? If it does not, it's actually going to run through this path here, which is my full agentic flow. You can see it says false and it runs up here, right? It'll run through this path. This is my full agentic flow with tools. But if not, it'll run through a pure LLM path because I don't need to go to GitHub to get that information. Why? Well, if you think about it, my GitHub information isn't going to change, right? From run to run to run. If somebody wants to come in here and let's say I want to run with DALI now, now it can do a secondary run, a subsequent one, more efficiently without using up more of the GitHub information, without having to go and get all that information, I've already got it, right? You can see the run was much faster that time, right? So it's an efficiency step that I'm able to do this uh, and run, use that if else condition component to determine what path I wanna take depending on some input criteria. Okay, and I'm just waiting for the DALI. DALI takes a little bit longer in stability, but I will say that the uh, generation is actually pretty darn cool. And there we go. Yeah, I, I love the output that I'm getting from that. So it's, again, it's taking my various languages and the animals represented with them and putting them together. Okay, so great. So we have that, like I said, we have this like conditional pink section um, that goes into my agentic flow or my pure LLM flow, depending on if the user exists or not. Then I have the post-processing section, which is like these gray ones. This area is super important for application development. Why? Because unlike having a very open-ended discussion with like a chatbot or something, in my applications, I probably want some kind of structured payload that I can send to my application so it can then, it has a contract that we've agreed to, right? The fact that I'm able to... Um, uh, to have UI components that have the various pieces here, this this all this information is actually coming from my structured payload output. Uh, so it's super important um, that I I have a consistent output that my application um, can adhere to. And then finally up here, we've got this like blue section. These are the various agents that I'm using with the agentic flow. Now for the in for the agentic part of this flow, um, I actually have two different things going on here. Um, one, you can see I have this coding language agent 
Um, and if I go to the tools here, you'll see I've given it that name. I've also given it a description. This is very important in Agentic Flows. I'm telling it, you are a tool to get coding languages used in a user's GitHub repo. Um, you'll see that I tend to build my Agentic Flows very modular. I've learned that it's better to make agents very specific at what they're doing. Um, so this one is specifically getting uh, coding languages. Um, in this case, I'm using the Composio uh, tool specific to uh, getting the language information. And then I have this other one, which is just getting the basic profile details, right? And so in this case, I'm telling it, hey, I want you to go here based off that GitHub username. Notice the curly braces there, right? So I'm passing in I'm that GitHub username is being exposed here in my prompt, and I'm passing that in from the input, right? So when that is rendered out, it would be in my case a Sonic DMG. It'd say, hey, I want you to search api.github.com slash users dash slash sonic dmg it's going to get all the base information right um so this then feeds into my main agent which is putting all of that together right so if we take a look at a flow uh we take a look at the output you can actually see here was the first one that i ran um here's this nice payload that i have it's getting things like my languages it's creating a prompt based off of that it's getting my github username url my num repositories and then this animal selection is the thing that I'm I'm using the structured output component to generate this. On the secondary run, the information is very similar. It should be why, because I stored it in the database. However, it generates a new prompt. Again, that is the part that I want to be variable because I want subsequent runs, I want the image to be different so users can generate multiple and get different animals every time. Okay, so one other thing that I really want to point out is this output. Notice that we have the LLM or the uh, agentic um, L, you know, portion that would give me output that kind of looks like this. But I need to put that into a format that my application can use and that is consistent. And that's where the structured output component comes into play. Now, I've covered the structured output component on another video right there. Go take a look at the link we've provided uh, to get more familiar with it. But what this allows me to do is notice on subsequent runs, I have the same exact structure every time, right? That's so important when working with an application where I have a contract and what that structure should be. And I really encourage everybody to try out CodeBeasts. Go to codebeasts.onrender.com. The link is below in the description. Have some fun. Use stability, use Dali, generate a beast that represents your coding skills and please share it. I would love to see the beasts that you all generate. And as usual, I hope you all got something really useful out of this today that was a little bit deeper combining both agentic and generative AI along with some data storage and retrieval, things like logic components like if else, and then as always the structured output component to ensure that you have good consistent payloads in your application. With that everybody, take care and happy coding.